Uh, this is our third and last video of week three, and we'll talk for a few moments about the Gospel of Luke. Uh, Luke um, makes claims that the others do not. Luke, uh, in uh, chapter 1, let me read it to you here, uh, says, at the, the beginning of the Gospel of Luke, he says this, As much as many have taken in hand to set in order a narrative of those uh, things which have been fulfilled among us, just as those who from the beginning were eyewitnesses uh, and ministers of the word delivered them to us, uh, it seemed good to me also, having had perfect understanding of all things from the very first, uh, to write to you an orderly account, an orderly account. That's the claim. Most excellent Theophilus, uh, that you may know the certainty of those things which in which you have been in which you were instructed. So, a couple characteristics. Um, uh, Luke says that uh, there were there are were existing accounts, and so he's going to draw from them. Uh, this supports the synoptic uh, theory, the Markan priority. There is evidence of the existence of at least one other document, which is normally called Q, uh, which is from the, the Greek word quellen, or quella, uh, which is source. Uh, and so uh, Luke is a compiler. Uh, and uh, by all indications, he was a companion of the Apostle Paul. Early church fathers indicate that Luke was a companion of Paul. Irenaeus says in the second century, uh, ecclesiastical history by Eusebius states that Luke was a companion of Paul. He traveled with him. And so he, being the scholar that he is, uh, put together an orderly account. He wanted to set it down uh, correctly. So in that sense, we might be able to take timelines from the Gospel of Luke in ways that we could not from Matthew and Mark or John for that matter, and especially John. So uh, let's look for just a few moments at this guy, Luke, and who he was and what he said. Luke was a Gentile. Uh, he, um, we find uh, in uh, the Colossians passage, the recruit two groups uh, that, that were with Paul, those of, of, of the circumcision and those not of the circumcision. Uh, those who were of the circumcision in the Colossians passage were Tychicus and Onesimus. Those who were not uh, were Epaphras and Luke, the beloved physician. And there we have another indicator that uh, Luke was a Gentile and that he was a doctor. He was a medical doctor. Uh, if you analyze the Greek uh, from within the Gospel of Luke, it's the best, it's, it's uh, the most educated and, and, and best phrased Greek. It, it's good, good Greek and not as rough like you would find in the Gospel of, of Mark. And so, the Gospel of Luke. So, who is he writing to? Uh, Theophilus. Uh, there's, this is a connection between Luke, Acts. As a matter of fact, some have put these together. And that both are written to a guy named Theophilus, and both are written by Luke. And so, Luke, Acts are tied together. That is an indicator of the purpose of the Gospel of Luke. And so Luke, being the Gentile, is as or more concerned about the expansion of the Gospel to the Gentile world. That's a theme throughout the Gospel of, uh, of Luke. And uh, so, and why? Because, of course, Luke's a Gentile. And um, uh, in his uh, theme of the gospel of the uh, the book of Acts, I should say, uh, Acts is the story of the the departure of the gospel from Jewish origins to Gentile destiny, and we'll get into that when we get to the book of Acts. So uh, there are certain themes that show up in the book of Luke that are I think unique and and wonderful. One is the the, uh, the, the prayer life of Jesus. And this is in your notes on page 36, but and I won't go into it, but if there was uh, any of the, the accounts of the life of Jesus that, that, that pictured his prayer life, uh, it would be Luke. And so it's well worth your investigation uh, to just go through all of these different 
uh, messages and, and verses that deal with uh, the kind of prayer life that Jesus kept, his teachings on prayer. Uh, the ministry of the Holy Spirit is crucial in Luke. Matthew and Mark, uh, at the end of them, is, is a commission. Go into all the world. Go into all the world. Go and preach the gospel. And they went preaching everywhere and signs following. That's, that's Mark. Uh, the Great Commission in Matthew 28, 19, 20. Go therefore and, 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 and make disciples of all nations, teaching them, baptizing them in the name of the Father and Son and the Holy Spirit. I'm with you always. You go to the end of Luke and it's different because instead of go, it's stay. Now he says, you're going to get sent. You're going to go into the world. I'm going to send you out. But before you go, stay in Jerusalem until you be endued with power from on high. And, and then I'm going to make you, I'm going to make you my witnesses. This ties the end of Luke directly into the end, the beginning of, of the book of Acts. And once again, the um, the emphasis on the Gentile world. Case in point, uh, the genealogies uh, of Matthew and Luke are different. Well, how are they different? Uh, Matthew, being the gospel written for the Jews, goes back to Abraham. That's where it starts. Luke being the gospel written to the Gentile world, goes back to Adam. So it's more inclusive in that sense. And so um, there's another little note about world missions. Uh, Luke tells of the sending out of the 70. Now, Jesus sent out the 12, you know, while he was not just in the book of Acts, but he sent them out to, to preach from time to time. They would go out and do works, come back. And they'd come back rejoicing, the demons were subject to them, and so forth. Well, the 12 was indicative of the 12 tribes of Israel. So then in Luke, you find that Luke sends out the 70, the 70. To a Jew in those days, 70 was the number of Gentile nations. This goes back to the Tower of Babel. This goes back to uh, the Genesis and there was the belief that there were in the world, there's one Israel and 70 Gentile nations. So once again, Luke deals with world missions, world evangelization. Some of the stories are pointed that way. Uh, the Good Samaritan, which says that God's not just working here in the Jewish people. These Samaritan people are getting it too. And you'll find that throughout the uh, the the Gospel of Luke. God bless you as you study.